Join us April 23rd, 9.30 a.m. for Burning Rubber in the Rubber City Car Cruise and Photo Shoot. Join us at BF Goodrich, Firestone, and Goodyear as we cruise the streets. Recently, I had the chance to make this bearing housing for a customer of ours. We didn't have a blueprint. We didn't have a 3D model. So I had to take all my measurements and basically make an old school handprint, which eventually we did draw it in the computer. The part was pretty beat up, so I had to be careful on the ID measurement where the bearing was pressed in. It was pretty close tolerance work, but I was up for the task. I really like this piece on. It's, uh, it's very easy to get a hang of. It works really good with the box. So I went ahead and chucked the part up and I got to begin uh, facing it. I took the bare minimum off the front side because I was really worried about the length. It was sold very close. So I turned what I call a chucking diamond. And that's so when I flip it around and drill it, it grips well. As you can see, I also left witness marks. So that way, if the part did not clean up 100%, I can show that, hey, I did the best I could. We got drilling. We got boring. I started out with this boring bar, which obviously didn't work out start jumping around. So then I tried the shorter one with the C clamp on it to alleviate vibration. That seemed to work for a little bit. Had a couple clamps on the big one. I tried, I, I swear, two or three different uh, boring bars. And I was going almost six inches deep. And I can only hold an inch and a quarter diameter bar in this current tur turret holder. So eventually I worked myself into a VNMG type situation where I was taking light cuts to eliminate the chatter process. And eventually I had success. I left a few tenths for polish. The tolerance was plus nothing, minus three tenths, ten thousandths of an inch. Been really busy around there, as you can see, my workbench is scattered. I use this precision bore gauge. programmed out the little bit of taper I had in the bore and finished her out and then I set up to do the side holes with the live tooling we have X holders as well as Z, as Z holders that are through spindle coolant they work really well I've had them up to 3,000 RPM on the live tools. It's really hard to see with a coolant spraying. And then we went on to the live z-axis milling we had to mill two flats 180 degrees apart timed in with the side holes that we did it was slow but it gets the job done and you eliminate a setup on a milling machine which is already busy turned out pretty well. 
Then I flipped it back around. Timed in the holes. The orientation process is pretty critical. So I ended up putting an edge finder <clears throat> in my live X board. All right, tip of the day. When you're tapping holes, sometimes it's better off to take a very small move forward and back. That way you don't break your tap. This is a quarter 20. Notice here's where it goes. I'm going to go just a little bit and then back it off. This is how you prevent breaking a tap. Quarter 20 is very, very fragile. So you want to take a little cut and back it off with the tap. in there so far back it out blow your tap off oh yeah that's how you do it blow your hole out so simple watch it's just so easy you definitely lube your tap up nice and good Put it back in the hole and repeat the process. Gently bring it in till you feel it hit the last spot you're at. Same process. Just little bits at a time. Once you get good at it, you'll feel the tap, feel it cutting. You'll hear the chips when you back off. Pop off the cut edge. And the reason you, you do little little passes or little movements is because when you back it off, it breaks the chip. The chip sticks to the edge of the tap. And if you just keep going down, the chip just spirals up and there's no way to exit. The, the flutes in the, in the tap only have so much room for the chip. So this is a secret that somebody taught me. And then I just broke one off like Good that. Good grief. Yeah, that's going to leave a mark. So rather than uh, flipping out and getting pissed off, I've been through this. We did set it up in the middle. Pick up the bore, move over to location, call that X0, Y0, and we cut it out with a solid carbide end mill. Now, the secret to this is doing a helical ramp about one thousandths per revolution so it does a little circle and with that being a quarter 20 tapped hole you need like a 150 thousandths end mill because you need a 200 hole but I, I got the process done for all the blood sweat and tears we had a finished product mm -hmm.